Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and this is part two of making a waterfall. If you haven't seen the first one, I made this stuff. And in this tutorial, I'm just going to be adding in some particles and having those react with the water here. So after this tutorial, our waterfall is going to end up with this kind of ripple stuff going on. And you can see the animation here if you like. So, to start out, I'm just going to start with our particle system. I'm going to go shift and right click up here and drop in a plane. And I'm actually just going to duplicate that and move it down to the bottom. If we go into wireframe, we can actually see what we're doing. I'm just going to scale that up. And this is going to be something for our particles to bounce off of when they go underneath. So it kind of looks like they're splashing back up. And for this, I'm just going to set it to be a collision object. All right. Back to the plane up here, and I'm going to rotate this on the x-axis by 90 degrees, so Rx90. I'm going to kind of flatten this out a little bit, and just so it doesn't look like it's appearing out of nowhere, I'm going to tuck it in a little bit. Alright, so that's pretty good. Let's go to the particle settings of this plane, and drop in a particle system. If we go shift and left arrow, that'll start us up at the start of the animation. And of course, you're going to want to factor in like how long your animation is going to be. But I'm just going to let it play through these 250 frames, and that'll probably work out all right. So for the first few settings of this, I'm probably going to turn up the velocity for normal a little bit. I probably want a little bit more force here to so try five. Whenever you change a setting, it's probably a good idea to hit shift and left arrow again just to restart it so it knows what it's doing more and this is pretty good but it's not very randomized so let's I'm just gonna move this so it's actually catching them let's make sure that it is ending up randomized let's go into the velocity and just set this to be about a one to start with and then we can change it if we need any more or less but just looking at this it looks like it's pretty well spread out and we've got some nice randomization going on Okay, so let's work on the dynamic paint element. The plane that I have down here with the water material is subdivided quite a bit. So it's just got that resolution that we can work with. And if we go into the physics tab and go dynamic paint, we're going to keep this at canvas and just go add canvas. And I'm going to switch from paint to waves. For the time scale, I'm just going to set this to be 0.36. And I'm going to turn up the dampening to be a 0.1. So that way the waves don't go too far because there's really a lot of stuff going on in this and we don't want it to be like a smooth pond unless you want it to be like a smooth pond. In which case, go for it. All right, so at this point, we should probably bake our particles. What I'm going to do before I bake them is just do some final settings. I'm going to turn the lifetime down to be about a 45. Once we've got that set to 45, I'm just going to add another zero here because these are water particles and there's going to be quite a few of them. And then once we get that set, you can see there's so many of these coming out. But once we get that set, I'm just going to hit bake here. And now we have them all pre-baked out, so that's going to not cost us any render time. You can see there's kind of a drop off at the end, but you can set your end frame to be the full amount in your animation. Okay, so we've got our particles all set. Let's just add a quick object so that they actually have something to render. If we go Shift-8 and Icosphere, I'm just going to grab that and move it back behind the wall here. And with this, let's just do a real quick material. So I'm going to go new and the principal shader is fine. And let's see, transparent. And if you have node wrangler, you can go control shift and right click and drag over those. And that will just add this mix shader here. So that's pretty cool. Water is generally pretty smooth. So I'm going to turn down the roughness and the IOR of water is 1.333. So let's just put that in there. And really, we just kind of want this to be transparent, but this will work. Now, when we go into rendered view, you can see that it's not actually transparent. So let's go to the material settings and set the blend mode to be alpha blend. And now we can actually see through it. And we really don't need this to be very visible. So it's OK if we just have it like this. Now, if we just select our particle system here, you can see I don't have it lined up perfectly, but this will work just fine. And if we go into the particle settings for this and go to render, we're going to switch halo to object and then just select that icosphere with the dropper tool here. And it will render out our water particle for us. So these are just going to be hitting our dynamic paint object here. 
and set these up as a dynamic paint object. Just select that. Um, if you want to select the base plane, that'll work as well. And I'm going to go over to my layout tab just so we can see a little bit better. Now if we go to the physics panel and dynamic paint, go brush and add brush. Now once again, if we hit shift and left arrow to restart the animation and play that out, you can see what it looks like. Nothing. That's super exciting. That doesn't do anything just because the plane up here isn't actually touching our water object at all. So what we want to do is set this to have the particles affect it rather than the plane. So if we just go down to source and switch that to particle system and then select our particle settings there and just once again restart the animation. Pow! We start to get all this crazy ripple stuff going on, which is cool. Now we've got these head guys here in the way, and you can see the waves are just going right through them, which we don't want. We want these to kind of reflect the waves or make them disappear. So to fix this, what we do is we just grab one of these and go dynamic paint, brush, add brush, and switch this to be from depth charge to reflect only. And now when we restart the animation and take a good look at it, here come the ripples, and they just bounce right off of it. Which is actually pretty dang sweet. You can really see the effect going on here, which is pretty cool. And so I'm just going to do that for this, and also for the cliff face, because you can see this stuff down here is getting affected. And it looks like the waves are just going right through. So I'm going to set that up real quick. Dynamic paint, brush, add brush, reflect only. I just noticed when I was doing that animation before, the particles were taking a second to come down into the water. If our animation is starting on frame 0, we probably want this to be already happening. So what I'm going to do real quick is select my particle system and go to the particle settings here. Delete the bake real quick and set the frame start to be a negative number. Looks like they touched the water at 43, so I'm just going to set this to be negative frame 43. And now at frame 0, they will already be touching the water. So let's bake that again real quick. Okay, so at frame 0, they are already touching the water. That's exactly what we want. Cool. It's reflecting off there. So that's very good. If we go into rendered view, you can kind of get an idea what it's going to look like. Nice. And if we're down at this angle, you can't really see the reflective plane down here. But if you want to get rid of that, you can select it and go into the object settings, visibility, and show in renders, you can just uncheck that value. So now we've got our water reacting to our waterfall pretty well. There's just one last thing, if you have a lot going on in the scene and you kind of want to make sure that you don't have to be like rendering a simulation of water the whole time, one thing you can do with that is go to your physics panel again and where it says cache down here, you can just bake out your water simulation and that will take a second. But once it's done, you have your scene all set. So that is pretty much the end of this tutorial, part two of the waterfall, all wrapped up. If you found this tutorial helpful and you'd like to see other tutorials like it, there's a link down in the description that says free hydraulic kit bash elements, and what happens when you click this is it will add you to my email list. I'll make sure the first thing I send you are some hydraulic kit bash elements for Blender, and then whenever I create a new tutorial, I'll shoot you an email and just let you know about it. But other than that, that's pretty much it. I hope you have an excellent day, hope you're staying safe out there, and I'll see you again later. Cheers!